Welcome to Griffin's Gaming Guides. In this video, we're going to go over every single gun that you can obtain on the Yasha world in Remnant 2. Now, Yasha is a jungle style world with some hard hitting dungeons, tough as nails bosses, and more rewards than any other world in Remnant 2 that I've found so far. Now, guns are your primary method of offense in Remnant 2 as they offer ranged attacks in varying forms and are classified as either long guns, which are your primary weapons, and handguns, which are your secondary or offhand weapons. Now, in total, there are six guns you can acquire on Yasha. There's four long guns and two handguns. Stick around to the end as we're going to show you a nice little trick you can do with a very tough to obtain boss weapon. So let's get straight into it. First of all, we've got the Bolt Driver Handgun, which can be found on Yasha in the Forbidden Grove. And you're going to be able to obtain this one by completing the Secret Water Heart Puzzle, which will also unlock you the Carnage in C Minor Trophy or Achievement. Now you're going to need to use the Water Harp in order to gain access to the Ravager's Lair, providing you've got the, the Forbidden Grove as your starting point on Yasha. You're then going to be able to go through to the Ravager's Lair, take down the Ravager or shoot the Doe, revive it, whatever it is that you choose to do. There's a number of rewards depending on how you take on the fight. Once you're done with the Ravager's Lair, depending on whatever way you wanted to do it, it's entirely up to you for this one. Go back outside, re-interact with the Water Harp and then use the sequence on screen where you're going to be able to basically put in the secret code. With that done, it's going to raise a pedestal just behind you, revealing the Bolt Driver Handgun. Now, the Bolt Driver Handgun is a bit of a funny one for me, as it needs to charge up. You need to hold down the fire button, whatever that might be, whether you're on console or PC. Hold it down, where you can then charge up a three-round burst. There's no way of changing this. It's three rounds, and they're not exactly the best, although they are electrically charged. Now for me, I'm not going to recommend that you go off and get the Bolt Driver unless you're a completionist or you want to get every single gun on Yasha as it just doesn't really do the damage compared to many other handguns out there. However, if it is for you, let me know down in the comments below and let me know why. Next up, we've got the Crossbow Long Gun, which can be acquired on Yasha in the Imperial Gardens by completing the Plinth Puzzle in Imperial Gardens. You need to make your way all the way around the biome, passing the checkpoint, then go up to the top of the ruins, clearing the enemies as you go, and interact with the Plinth Puzzle. There's going to be four rings. You need to line up the symbols, just like this on the video. Once you've done so, activate the Plinth, it's then going to move a section of floor out the way. You can then go down and obtain the crossbow long gun. Now the crossbow is a bolt action long gun. It fires one round, then it needs to reload. It'll then fire another round and it'll need to reload. For me, over DPS, it's not exactly the best. Obviously damage per second. There are much better long guns out there. However, this thing is pretty silent. So if you want to move through the worlds in a kind of stealth mode, the enemies will still aggro to you for the most part. However, if you want to feel like you're taking them down a bit like Rambo, you want to use a crossbow, this is the one for you. Ooh, not bad. Next up, we've got my personal favorite long gun, Merciless, which is obtained by allowing the Doe to survive throughout the Corrupted Ravager fight 
until the Ravager then goes and kills the dough and eats it, which will then gift you the Crimson Membrane as a reward. However, I do strongly recommend that you unequip either the Handler or the Summoner or any other class which will offensively go after a target randomly, as if the dough dies before the Corrupted Ravager goes to eat it, you won't get the Crimson Membrane and you will need to re-roll as even restarting at a checkpoint, it won't count. It is a re-roll for this one at the time of doing this video. Now, once you have the Crimson Membrane, you can then go back to Macabre in Ward 13 along with seven Luminite Crystal and a thousand Scrap and Craft Merciless, which this gun is absolutely fantastic for me. It's the only boss weapon so far that I've taken up to level 10 and it is an absolute beast. What this thing does essentially is fire teeth rather than bullets, which then cause heavy bleed damage to a target. Once you've inflicted enough damage, you can then press R1, RB or whatever the button is on PC to activate your weapon mod. You're then gonna basically turn this thing into a penetrating sniper rifle. If you've got a line of enemies, send a round through the first one and it will hit all of them. Providing they're all of the line, it won't track but it will go straight through pretty much anything. Now this thing does inflict incredibly heavy damage against bosses and the bleed damage has to be seen to be believed as it is just, well, it just decimates enemies. As soon as they start bleeding, for the most part, they're already dead. They just haven't caught up with the fact yet. Once you've got Merciless, I would strongly recommend leveling this one up as the damage that it can output against bosses, aberrations, special enemies, or even just normal cannon fodder it is well worth a look. Next up we've got Sagittarius, which is a long gun you can acquire on Yasha in the Cathedral of Omens by completing a puzzle. Now given the procedurally generated nature of the biomes in Remnant 2, it might be harder to find the Cathedral of Omens than it will be to complete the puzzle, but leading you to the Sagittarius weapon, which is an incredibly powerful bow with a very nice party piece as well. So I'll just run you through it quickly. Once you're inside the Cathedral of Omens, you need to go to the puzzle which will have three levers for you to pull, one over to the left, one in the central and one over to the right of your starting location. And to acquire the Sagittarius, you need to pull the left lever twice, then go to the central lever and pull that once. Finally, go over to the right side lever, you will need to pull twice, revealing the Sagittarius long gun in the center of the puzzle. Now, one of the things that makes Sagittarius such a powerful weapon, not only is it a bolt action, so it will fire kind of round, reload, round, reload, a lot quicker than the crossbow that we looked at a few minutes ago, this one hits incredibly hard, has a very, very high weak spot damage bonus of 115%, and its special ability is called Starfall, which fires a powerful arrow which deals 36.6 damage and opens a seven meter portal that rains down star fragments. Each fragment deals 61 damage within a four meter range and lasts for six seconds. It is an incredibly powerful, albeit difficult ability to use that's pre-built into the Sagittarius long gun. You need to anticipate where the enemies are going to be for Starfall to be effective. If you aim for where they were, it will then kind of spawn where the enemies were. Whereas if you kind of track their path, fire it in front of them, allowing for a good couple of seconds, it will then open up and unleash Merry Hell onto the enemies. Difficult one to use, but a fantastic one once you've mastered it. Shit, shit, shit.
Next up, we're going to have a look at the Sorrow Handgun. Now, before you can obtain the Sorrow Handgun, you firstly need to go through Kaula's Rest and grab the Tear of Kaula Ring, which will then initiate the Kaula Shadow boss fight. Once you've done that, you can then go back out to the Forbidden Grove, where you should be able to find Maedra, who will be in basically a very large purple-blue tree. Once you've found her, run through the initial dialogue, which will then unlock the Equal Measures Trophy or Achievement. Then speak to her again, where she will ask you if you have something in your possession. Offer to give her the Tear of Kaula Ring, where she will then give you the Sorrow Handgun. Now, the Sorrow Handgun is very powerful. It's only got a magazine of five. However, it does have an ability called Eulogy, which recalls bolts, which deal 30 damage when pulled from a target when striking targets on their return. And recall bolts also grant 2% of max health to yourself. Recall boats can also overfill Sorrow, allowing your magazine to go up to a maximum of 10, which then means you can fire 10 more bolts, and providing you've dealt enough damage, you're then going to have built up Eulogy again, where you can essentially rip the bolts back out of an enemy just by tapping RBR1 or whatever the button is on PC, and you're basically just going to be turning yourself into a bit of a mini blender. Turning enemies into a dartboard and then ripping the darts back out of them does inflict very heavy damage. Especially given the fact that, say like you've peppered an enemy with seven bolts from Sorrow. Once you've done so, if, as soon as you tap your ability button, you're then going to rip the seven bolts out of the enemy. Dealing basically seven times the normal damage, whatever that might be, depending on how far you've upgraded the Sorrow handgun. This is definitely a one to look out for. <laughs> Finally, we have the Twisted Arbalest Long Gun, which is a very underrated gun. When I first got this, I thought it was a bit crap. Now that I've actually had to play around with it and I've used it a good amount against the enemies, it is fantastic. Now, in order to obtain this weapon, you firstly need to take down the Corruptor in the Great Bowl, which you can do so long as you've got the Red Throne as a starting point on Yasha. Once you've done that, go all the way through, take down the Corruptor after having disabled the Guardian that will be chasing you around, shoot it in the face a few times, it will then basically just be stunned. You can then allow the Corruptor to raise itself up, revealing the very powerful weak spot you can unload Merry Hell into. Once you've taken the Corruptor down after having disabled the Guardian, it's then going to give you the Twisted Lazarite. You can take the Twisted Lazarite, seven Luminite Crystals and a thousand scrap back to Macabre in Ward 13 and then craft the Twisted Arbalest Long Gun. Now this thing is, again, it's a bolt action but it does have a very nice party piece where the Crossbow and Sagittarius fire one round that basically hits a target and that's it. The Twisted Arbalest will fire a disc that will penetrate through five or six enemies depending on how many are there and depending on how much they're lined up it will go off and find the enemies for you, provided they're in close proximity, and deal fairly heavy damage to each one of them. Then once you've dealt enough damage, you can then activate the Guardian's Call ability, whereby when mod power is full, primary fire becomes empowered and highlights enemies that it strikes. Activating the mod calls down a Guardian Sword on enemies struck by an empowered energy disc. Swords deal 122 damage and three times stagger within three meters, and it does hit very, very hard. So the Twisted Arbalest is a fantastic long gun if you're struggling with enemies of crowd control. The fact it's only got a magazine of one is a bit of a letdown. However, given the fact that it can hit multiple enemies with its one round, it does make it a lot more beneficial than some of the other weapons that we've looked at that you can obtain in Yasha. 
So that's how to obtain all six weapons on Yasha in Remnant 2. I do hope that this video has given you a kind of a good look at what they do, what their abilities are all about, and how much damage they can output. Everything apart from Merciless was level 1. Obviously the Merciless gun was level 10, so that's why it's dealing so much damage earlier on in the video. However, like I said, it is a fantastic weapon. If you manage to get Merciless, make sure that you upgrade it, and I very much doubt if you're going to regret that decision. So obviously that's the list complete on Yasha for all of the guns you can get. Which one's your favourite? Have you managed to get any of these? Have you got all of these? Or have you got absolutely none of these? Have you even been to Yasha yet? Whatever it is, let me know down in the comments so we can have a chat about it. I've gone through Yasha 24 times at the time I'm making this guide. So if you do need any help or advice, let me know. And I'm sure I can help you out one way or another. But either way, whichever you decide to do, give the sub button a click. I do appreciate it massively. You guys look after yourselves and we do look forward to seeing you back here at Griffin's Gaming Guides.